Gough Whitlam was elected in 1972. By the time his prime ministership was through, the people of Australia got health care, higher education everywhere. Australian troops were taken out of Vietnam. Whitlam spoke out against the savage bombs. He suggested that Australia be a different kind of place. He talked about shutting down the spy base. No one could forget who was alive those days in 1975. He got Nixon's attention then and his coup plotting CIA men. The same people they set loose on Indonesia were assigned to work in Whitlam's Australia, sending in agents and not saying who. Through different methods, the prime minister knew, and the chief one colluding with the CIA plot held the governor general's spot. No one could forget who was alive those days in 1975. Sir John Kerr was assigned to the scene, suggested by the party, appointed by the Queen, with whom he corresponded secretly in a plot to undermine his own democracy. For months he schemed behind Whitlam's back, waiting for the moment he could act. When he had a chance, his solution was a double dissolution. No one could forget who was alive those days in 1975. There were the biggest protests in Australian history while the Governor General was commended by His Majesty for overthrowing Whitlam, for kicking him out. What constitutional monarchy is all about when they woke up down under one day in November, not knowing if the future might even remember that Australia was almost an independent state before Whitlam met his fate. No one could forget who was alive those days in 1975. Gough Whitlam was elected in 1972.